So you would all agree with me that carrying computers in our pockets drastically changes the way we use technology. But as with all computing forms, the input and interfaces that allow us to control these devices plays a very central role. And my work focuses on soliciting new forms of input, generating new interaction opportunities, and all of this using computational sensors. Now, historically, if you look at the adoption of any computing platform, you'd find that it was very closely tied to input and interfaces. So even the bulky desktop had a keyboard and mouse as input, and our smart devices, like smartphones, that enable this on-the-go computing experience were largely enabled by touchscreens. We're now at the cusp of a very transforming class of devices. Some of you may like them, may not, like smartwatches and the Google Glass. And what these devices are doing is they're blending the digital interaction in an immersive and engaging way that has never been done before. But at the same time, they're shrinking our computing area to the point that physical interaction is not going to be possible. I look at that as an opportunity. And there are several ways of doing this, things like voice, where you could have privacy issues, hand wound sensors, and external controllers that encumber the user. Touch is almost impossible. There's literally no surface area to touch. So what can we do? We're forgetting one thing, and that is that we are very naturally emotive people. We communicate by gestures with each other. So what if we could use this human de dexterity to communicate with our digital devices? And that's what this whole upcoming area of natural user interfaces is attempting to do. All right, we'll switch gears a little bit, and we'll get into the tech. So how does a machine recognize human hand gestures? Typically, you'll use some form of an optical sensor. This could be a 2D camera that you carry on your devices. It could be a 3D camera, like the Kinect or the Leap. And then the standard pipeline is you capture a bunch of images of the user's actions. Uh, you use some computational tools, like machine learning, to now interpret and convert them to commands. Ah, but there's one caveat. The 2D cameras that you carry, they don't operate that well in all kinds of illumination conditions and a clutter. Now, clutter is very essential to any mobile environment. You don't know where you're going to be next. And 3D cameras are very bulky and power hungry. So when I started looking at this problem about a year ago, everybody else was trying to make better cameras. And I turned the problem around its head. What if there was no camera? What if we didn't want any lenses and mirrors? What if imaging? could be reduced to just a handful of pixels. What would that mean? How would we now blur the boundary between physical actions and digital interfaces? So a camera can roughly be broken into its optics, the body, and the sensor. But you would start by first dissolving the optics and the body. Now what would consequently happen is you'd get a very blurry image. So this blurry image is as useless to gesture recognition as it is to our viewing. Now further, if you took away a whole bunch of these sensors from the sensor array and were left with just a handful, you would have just very, very little information. The challenge in my work was to use just three pixels and still acquire human hand gestures. So what did I do? I added a simple component, an LED, into the mix. What this does is it illuminates the scene repeatedly with short pulses of infrared light, so this is invisible to your eye. And then the backscatter light goes to these three small pixels. Now, the seemingly very simple configuration took some key insights into actually getting it to work. So my work is primarily very interdisciplinary. And so I borrowed insights from this field of information theory that attempts to look at the intersection of signals, sensors, and information. And to summarize the math behind that in one line, what we're doing is we're actually acquiring this high-frequency information that captures information of interest using very low, very low bandwidth components, like LEDs and photodiodes. Now, I want to share with you this very dear prototype that took a long time to get to work. Well, it was one that we first mounted onto a pair of music smart glasses, completely battery operated. It could op operate in a variety of environmental conditions. This could include changing illumination conditions and so on. Uh, but what I wanted to demonstrate here was that you could put this theory into action. And so I want to take you through a set of example applications that we built with this prototype and share to you an extension that we made in capturing even facial signatures in 3D. So imagine if you could smile to unlock with 3D facial signatures. Use natural gestures to navigate high dimensional content like maps on your tiny screens. Quick input to volume control. And now I love smart wearables. Um, and yes, talking to the glass is a little weird. So this is um, a view of an augmented reality interface through the music smart glasses. What the user is doing is controlling the focus through depth, 
and then capturing an image. You're manipulating content while the view is fresh and alive. You're doing it on the go. We also wanted to do in-air writing so that you could comment on this picture while you're taking it. And then when you're done, post it to your favorite social media. That's me sort of chilling in the lab, playing Fruit Ninja with the sensor. And then um, a recent thing that we did is we took the sensor outdoors. So this was on the Google Glass. Uh, you're looking at the view as you would see it through the augmented interface. The user here is cropping out this tree. She really likes it. And then if you're going running, maybe you could even listen to your playlist and navigate through it. So the opportunities uh, are endless. And what I want to do with this technology <laughs> thank you, is actually look at this future of input and interfaces. And I will continue to take apart sensors. And I will continue to examine their signals. And then finally, look at a cross-disciplinary approach to generate computational sensors for this ever-changing landscape of digital devices. Thank you. Thank you.